Hello, how are you? Hello, John. Nice to see you. I'm well, very well, thank you. Well, thank you for giving up your time. Uh, I know you're very busy. Um, what are you actually working on at the moment? Um, well, this week, uh, third week of January, I am. I, I have got three pieces of bare bronze, of raw bronze, back from the foundry. Um, so it's been a week of making bases for my... For, uh, there's a portrait, uh, a life-size portrait, a small sort of half life-size portrait, and a little torso with portrait on, sort of a figure study, fragment really of a, of a, of a larger figure study. And the, the, the processes when I return from foundry are making the patina, making sure there's a secure piece underneath the bronze which can go into a base, making a base, working on the wood for the base, treating it, staining it, <clears throat> um, drilling holes, all sorts of artisanal practice which go around the, um, the creation of the initial sculpture. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm making, I'm finishing three bronze sculptures for sort of presentation at the moment. Um, I was here late last night and I was struggling to get the colour of a portrait just right. Um, before the finishing touch of waxing it, which secures the, the patina at the end. So I'm doing an event uh, with the sculpture students at Camberwell, and some of the questions they would like to ask you, ask you I think, would be, um, as a professional portrait sculptor, uh, you must rely on high quality images. Can you give them any advice on uh, what you've learned is important to secure a commission? Oh, well, a good image is, fundamental to securing commission um, I mean it's important that you you strike a balance between having good images of your work and hopefully being able to enjoy a real world presence in other words having people to come to see your work doing group shows having a solo show when you're ready perhaps you know getting artwork out into the real world is is such an essential part of it but there's a global audience there's a global market so having the right image is absolutely fundamental and in fact it, it's astonishing how an image a bad image can totally misrepresent your work um particularly with sculpture oh by the way can i just apologize i'm under the district line and there are trains going overhead every two or three minutes so that's what you hear um yeah what i was saying is you can really mess up you can really badly represent a, a sculpture if if you don't have the right conditions and you don't you don't do it justice you don't enhance the form and um, create an atmosphere that you want your sculpture to convey you can you can you can create a mood an atmosphere and enhance the emotions of a piece with the right lighting with the right setting so um, as for commissions I think if you are somebody who wants to work to commission, which is a particularly useful way of working with portrait sculpture, way of, you know, paying the bills, um, it's, it's important to be clear about what's involved with the clients. For example, you may or may not perceive with mine, I, I work from life and I need to have models. So if somebody's commissioning me to do a portrait of their husband their daughter whatever it is um their dog their horse i i have to make it clear I, I i make it clear to people how many hours i want them to sit for me how how long the process will take in months um so that you can manage people's expectations um you can you know you can hook them in with a good image you can entice them to the studio they can fall in love with the idea of having a portrait but then you have to within reason give them a sense of what's involved on their part financially time comfort um you know and how much how much i need from them in order for a commission to go ahead okay um so i know that you uh do your own photography you uh involved with that and we've already talked to the students earlier on about um how sometimes artists can get too close to their work and uh and have difficulty divorcing their kind of um, immediate work with the image that they are taken. Um, but mm. I want to ask you about, um, in other words, when I look at your printed material, 
and uh, your website, I see that you favour dark and tonal contrasts, you know, which I think is referred to as chiaroscura. Um, yeah. How do you achieve this? What's your workflow or techniques? Um, oh, well, that's a good question. Um, there's a there's a sort of an aesthetic answer to that and a technical answer to that. I mean, I'm inspired by the kind of um, Renaissance masters in painting with chiaroscuro, um, pioneered very strongly by Caravaggio. You know, that was a great inspiration uh, for getting a sort of a mood in a piece. Um, <clears throat> the choice of going very, very dark to complement the light forms on the sculpture is achieved by Technically, first of all, the important thing is to have a, a very, very clean background. Um, I go for as close to black as possible. And the best thing you can do is a sort of a heavy roll of card of black or extremely dark gray card, which gives you a continuous curve behind. That's what I've found complements the, the forms um, uh, most clearly with least obstruction. I don't always have a piece of that. And so I also use uh, a piece of black cloth and I hang that up behind it. And I try to have as few creases in the cloth as possible. As you can see from some of my images, I don't always um, succeed in that. But well, shall yeah. we go and have a look at one of your images now? That exactly. would be great, yeah. I mean, the sculpture Mauro, which was cropped from a life-size standing figure I made a few years ago. Um, he's He is positioned in front of a, a card, a heavy paper card roll of continuous, um, with, sorry, to, to, to make a continuous curve, it's black paper on a roll. And the, the, the striking thing about that, if you squint down and you think about the light sources, um, this piece is photographed with two strong light sources. One of them, as you see on the left of the sculpture, is directly aimed at the card, at the background. And the effect of that is that it is highlighting, sorry, it's throwing the left side of the sculpture into strong relief. The second light source is, is coming from below and it's aiming at the other side of the sculpture. And it's, it's, um, it's aiming in a way that doesn't allow the light to fall on the right hand side of the paper. So this there's... is um, a classic chiaroscura image in right. the effect that you've got on the cursor here, I can see yeah. a dark area with a light behind. And then on the opposite side, you have light with dark behind. And that's the kind of very Rembrandt lighting. Succinctly put, yeah, you put it in far fewer words than me. You're better with words than I am. Yeah, so that's that's the key thing, and and that that creates um, uh, it it gives importance to the shadow in there, while actually you know it gives equal importance to the shadow as the light, and of course there is no form in the shadow, but it's the only way that you can really allow the 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 form to sing by being in the light. So there's an interesting play of of shadow and light there. So, um, user digital SLR. Yeah. And can you tell the students what kind of file you might use and uh, and how you prepare the file? Well, I, I, I have a bit of help with post production, but because uh, I'm not brilliant on a computer, but I've got, managed to understand so far how to go, uh, just how to go far enough with the SLR. Um, I shoot in raw file. And that allows um, the post-production to be uh, taken in any direction that we desire, that I desire. Um, so as long as it's raw file. Um, so the image without being processed afterwards will not really be satisfying for you or? You... I, <clears throat> I, can achieve, <clears throat> I can achieve as close to what I want in the studio as I, I try to achieve as close to what I want in the studio with the camera, but I'm always, I'm always um, impressed by what can be tweaked in a, with a, with the use of a bit of Lightroom, uh, yeah. Photoshop or Lightroom afterwards. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's great. Fantastic, um, fantastic software. Yeah. 
So during the recent lockdown, um, what kind of effect has this had on you working professionally? Well, it was difficult to buy clay uh, for a while, but I had, a, I had a little bit of clay and I started recycling more clay, uh, more um, conscientiously than I used to. So it's made me a little bit more frugal with materials. Um, it has been difficult to get some materials. Um, and uh, and we've, of course, talked, we've talked a lot about this um, with others, other um, artists and students, so they've mm. become more sustainable, you know, because they're yes. looking, looking at things and, and resourcing them. Well, I mean, at the beginning, people were very, very conscious about what was the right food to buy um, so that they could, you know, make a make a meal and eke it out it's a it's similar with art supplies isn't it yeah. um uh, so uh, i i have managed to sort of plod on with some of the uh recycled materials that i that i can use in the studio but uh one thing has been difficult for me is that models are not able to join me in the studio to sit for portrait of course or yeah and so so that's been a little bit hard um I have, uh, during the summer, of course, we had such a beautiful summer, I was able to sculpt people outside. I did a couple of portraits outside, so that was really nice. Um, uh, and sometimes I want to go very, very close to observe the form of a model, and I can't do that anymore. It's two metres yeah. minimum. So. Yeah. But it hasn't, been, it hasn't been too bad because I work alone anyway, um, yeah. apart from when I have a model. Yeah. Okay, well, you know, thanks for your time. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll catch up soon. Yeah, thank you very much. Always a pleasure, John.